Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Life of the Rest. Hope you all are doing well today. We're going to be looking at a book. One of the books that I spoke about on our podcast called The Watchbook uh, Rolex. Uh, this is by <coughs> uh, Gisbert uh, Brunner and it, what, this is the updated and extended edition. This book has been published a couple of times, but there are some additional sections that have been added to this book um, about the history of Rolex. And I really think I spoke about this on one of the podcasts. Um, you know, I think a lot of the times we take sort of a passive approach to collecting, and I think doing research and reading books like this allow you to take more of an active role in learning things that you didn't know and not allowing for sort of people to, to push information to you about watches and, and sort of tailor the information that they want you to know about. Um, allows you to sort of explore it yourself. So I'm going to be going into this book. Um, I'm not going to go page by page, but I'll give you sort of a high level overview of what's in it and then also um, just give you my thoughts on the sections. I think there's some really beautiful sections in this book, especially the auction section, which as a vintage lover, obviously is, is the section that I really enjoyed. So without further ado, let me flip perspectives so you can take a look at this book. All right, so very excited to jump into the watch book Rolex updated and extended edition by uh, Gisbert L. Brunner. This is a really great book if you are looking to research a little bit about um, Rolex or really dig into the history of, of, a, of a watch brand. What was really cool about this book, and, and I, I think I've spoken about this on our podcast and in a video recently, um, actually maybe not in a video, just in our podcast, was the idea that, um, you know, collecting collecting watches can sometimes feel like a um, passive pursuit and I think taking a more active role in trying to you know research and learn about watches is is something that uh, literature can do and I think this is a really great example of the way a way that you can um, a way that you can further your knowledge about Rolex which is probably a brand that you started off liking or, or heard about or, or something along those lines so I'm very excited to, to go into this book so this book um, is, uh, uh, as I mentioned, by uh, Gisbert L. Brunner, and if we just go into the into the book here, you can see extremely high quality. This is the second revised edition of this book. Um, this book was released, uh, let me just skip through here, um, to pass this history section really quickly. Um, or I'm looking for a table of contents here is what I'm here we go. So you can see um, what uh, the book sort of uh, goes over, but this book was released and has had two editions that have extended this book a little bit more. It's added um, additional context to maybe to some of the historical um, historical moments in the Rolex uh, history over the last couple of years, which I think is a great way of updating and making sure that this is completely current. I'll read a quick overview of this book. Um, so. Um, this is a best-selling um, reference work by wristwatch expert uh, Gisbert L. Brunner. No doubt about it, Rolex is a chron chronometric legend. The company was founded in 1905 by Hans Wildorf, a Bavarian marketing genius who focused on innovation. Watch enthusiasts have Wildorf to thank for many of the outstanding models and technical advances, including the, the first official cer officially certified wristwatch, the waterproof oyster housing, the date just, the sports, Watches like the Submariner Divers, which date back to more, more than 50 years. Although this book gives the company incredible tradition it's due, it also uh, devotes ample space to the present crafting in-house uh, to exact specifications. Rolex's breadth of timepieces combine the utmost of sophisticated luxury with advanced precision. All this and much more in yours to enjoy the third volume of the, the successful uh, the watch book series. This book comes in English, German, and French. So, um, as that sort of alluded to, this book, book really goes into detail about um, the history of Rolex, what uh, they were able to accomplish, but also pay um, pay tribute to some of the incredible things that they've done recently. Just to go over the book a little bit, this is a really beautifully um, uh, put together book. As you can see, it's actually got this sort of fabric-like um, texture to it. So you can see it there. It's it's um, 
a very cool sort of texture that they've used to bind this book. You can see it down the spine here, really nicely put together. The back has a similar um, has a similar texture to it. So all in all, just a very well um, well produced um, book with beautiful gold um, gold text to um, to look at this book. So. I sort of opened up this book already, but as you can see, very, very high quality, high quality book that was um, put together. I'll leave it here a little here on this page so that you can see what this book actually covers. Um, so, um, as you can see, you have a foreword from uh, the author. You have a history section, milestones, which really focuses heavily on all of the feats that um, Rolex was able to accomplish over their history, and that has uh, a lot to do with sort of the history of the company the, the, and then the pieces that they released throughout their history. Then, there, then there's a section on production values, which is actually a very interesting section, especially for collectors nowadays because um, many people have opinions on, on that. Um, there's Rolex and the Spirit of Discovery sort of um, identifying, you know, they had a lot of um, dis, uh, Adventures that that sort of stems from um, why they produce their pieces, and um, and which, which I think is great. There's also Rolex in the world of automobiles, which is a, obviously a very very big section um, and uh, integral to the history of Rolex. And then lastly, they've actually got an auction section, which I think is one of the coolest, especially for a vintage watch enthusiast, which um, is really um, something I, I enjoy looking at. I'm gonna quickly just open this up here. Um, if you can see, there's also a timeline at the top of this book. If you look here, you can see a timeline of where and when these their pieces were released, starting all the way in 1926. I'll just zoom in on that really quickly so you can see. Um, but you can see um, Oyster, page 56, 1926. You can see some of the pieces that they've um, released as well. So let me zoom out here. I'll give you just sort of a flavor of what this book is like, um, so you can kind of get um, at least that context. Uh, here, I'm not going to go page by page, but I, I, I'm definitely going to just call out some of the sections that I think are, are the most interesting. So, as I mentioned, there's a foreword here, which, which is quite nice. One of the things I really loved about this book, actually, was the that they had three different languages, English, German, and French, which is... Um, a nice little touch making it uh, an easily accessible global uh, book. You can see here sort of a, a really beautiful uh, moon phase, a little section here devoted specifically to the founder and the incredible history that he has with the company. Um, one of the things that's also amazing about this book is the pictures that are included, not just of the history here, but as we continue through this book, you'll see um, like snippets on this left side here, you can see a, a catalog of the Rolex pieces here, um, which is a, a, another um, really great example of, of the quality of this book. Um, we kind of continue on here, and, and I'll give you sort of a flavor as we go here. Um, I'll, I'll sort of skip to this next section, which is Milestones. Uh, milestones obviously goes over the pieces that were released and big events that happened, everything from the first wristwatch ever produced to um, you know, uh, chr chronometer certification, which was something that was very, very big for um, for this brand. Um, just kind of, uh, you know, their relationship with World War One and trench trench uh, trench watches. As you can, can kind of continue on, you know, there's a ton of different different watches that you can see here. Um, the founding of the Oyster case, the use of watches. Um, you know, things like oysters and uh, per, um, perpetual automatic winding uh, movements was big. Again, the, the quality of the pictures here and the diversity of the watches that you're able to see is, is just phenomenal. I mean, if you just take a look at this section alone, you have so many incredible, um, so many incredible pieces here that are being showcased um, and, and pictures of movements and like so um, just I, I think it's a it's a great sort of example of, of the things that you can see with this company so um, anyway we will continue on
more, I'll, 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 I'll move us <laughs> along here if that's alright. Um, but but the, the quality of the pictures and diversity, I think, is, 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 is what I um, really want you to just uh, see here. Because, I mean, you see all these different versions of the bubble back. You've seen, you can see so many more here that are just absolutely phenomenal um, examples. Um, I'll skip maybe to the to the Submariner section. You know, they have a section about the date just and, and, and go all the way to the sort of modern um, history. They also sort of talk about the, the, the Rolex and the moon phase watches. You can see this being a uh, 6062 that sold at auction pretty recently. Um, Explore, they've got a whole section on explorers. Um, then we've got a whole section, and this was incredible because the way that they typically laid these out was they had one section for English, German, and French. But for this, what they actually did was they split it out. So they had um, a whole, all of this text is English, and it really allowed for them to extend the amount of um, images that you can see of these, these watches. You can see um, incredible red subs, um, Kermits, you see some of the modern versions of these pieces, and it, and it doesn't stop, you know, you see a beautiful full set, um, full set Red Submariner here. We can see some of the Comex divers, and it just continues. You have ads here of, of Rolex watches, and essentially they do this for, I mean, just look at, look at how beautiful that, that watch is there. Just, um, <laughs> ridiculously pristine. They have a section about Milgal, so it, it really does continue. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to skip us along here, if that's okay. Um, I encourage you to buy this book uh, so that you can actually uh, take a look at it. But you can kind of see as I'm flipping through it um, the, the, the breadth and all of these pieces. You can see date dates in, in, this, in this book as well. Um, it really is incredible. And a section about the deep sea. Um, Closone here, sort of. Uh, more about uh, sort of art pieces that they produced. Uh, I love Closonet dials, which is um, just, you know, personal. Um, they have a whole section about chronographs and the, and the chronographs that were produced by, by Rolex, all the way up to uh, the, sub, the Daytona, which I think you can imagine would be a big section. I mean, just look at how beautiful that is there. Uh, but they have a whole section, really extensive section on chronographs you can see Split second that is famous for the John Goldberger episode of Talking Watches. Um, it just it just keeps going, and they do it for for all of the watches that they've released. On you know they have a section about the Explore twos, and, and um, it really kind of continues. Um, I'm skipping a lot here, but I, I want to give you a look at you know everything that's, that's here. This is the section about the production and values. I mean, focus up here, production and values, which I think is a great section. Talks about what the brand, um, what makes Rolex a Rolex and, and what the brand really values, um, their production and how they, how they do it, all of this, and sort of deeply rooted in Hans Wildorf and his original philosophies. Um, and, you know, some nice, some nice passages here to read through. They then have a section about, um, Rolex in the Spirit of Discovery, and you can see things like Sir Edmund Hillary here um, with the watches that were released and, and uh, were worn and his experience with the Explorer. One of the things I loved about this book was there were things that I read in here that I didn't know about Rolex, and it was nice to sort of discover something new, um, which is always, I think, uh, you know, Spirit of Discovery, I guess. <laughs> um, so this section kind of continues and goes into when you know diving, and um, then there's a section about Rolex in the world of automobiles, and as you can imagine, there's people like Paul Newman here, Sir Malcolm Campbell, etc., etc., and and the use of Rolexes in these pieces, and then we get to um, Rolexes of the auction world, and this is a really cool section where it talks about obviously the. Paul Newman's Paul Newman and the amazing record that it that it uh, achieved at auction, but also um, the significance of it in the watch world. But they also have some other significant pieces here that you probably are familiar with because I've covered them on our channel of Rolexes that have sold at auction um, and uh, have achieved uh, pretty incredible records. Um, and that is how this version of this book 
uh, book ends. It even goes uh, so much to sort of graph out um, the uh, price evolution of, uh, of the Oyster Perpetual Submariner from 1993, which I think is quite interesting. So um, I'll end with this. This is copyright 2021, and I'll end so that you can see the... Um, ISBN number in case you're interested in picking up this specific version. Alright, I think I've held it there long enough for you to get it. If you haven't, just pause this video. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is um, that is a, a quick overview of this book. I, I really encourage you to um, find this book on, in, online or in a bookstore um, and, and allow yourself to experience um, this book because it really will help you learn about Rolex, but also pursue watches in a, in a um, completely uh, different way that maybe you're not, um, not doing right now. And maybe you'll learn something about Rolex. So, um, I should have been wearing, I'm wearing a memo sale, but I should have been wearing um, a Rolex. Uh, unfortunately, I hope you are wearing a Rolex while we're going through this. So, if you are, drop us a, drop us a comment and let us know which one you're wearing. And I'll flip perspectives so we can close out the video. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the watchbook Rolex updated and extended edition. Um, I really encourage you to pick up this book if you if you like Rolex, if you're interested in learning more about them. There are many things that I learned about Rolex just by reading this that I didn't know previously. And so I think it's an amazing opportunity for you to further your knowledge about a brand that you probably love. You probably you might own a Rolex and, and is a, a, a company that I think is obviously the grail for many, many pieces, many, many people. Um, so I encourage you to pick it up. It will give you a, a deeper appreciation for the brand. Um, it's available online. You can probably find it in bookstores as well. Um, and, you know, further your knowledge about watches and, and the history of an iconic watch brand. If you are new to Life on the Wrist, be sure to subscribe to the channel and share this with your friends who may be interested in watches. Um, I cover a range of topics on this channel, so would love to have you and them part of the Life on the Wrist family. Let me know what you think about this book, and if you are wearing a Rolex, put a comment in the comment section below so I can see what it is. I messed up and wore a metal sale. I should have been wearing a Rolex, but um, yeah, it didn't happen today. Um, so yeah, let me know what, what watch you're wearing while you're watching this video. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button for me, it really does help me out. With this said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time.